I'm going to demonstrate the deferred acceptance algorithm with 68 students and 10 teams. First, we create table printouts with each team in its own column listing their preferred students in order. For this example, Team 9 and Team 10. For Team 9, you can see that Student 19 is their highest ranked preferred student, all the way down to Student 67, who is their lowest ranked preferred student. Next, we create slips for each student indicating both their preferred teams in order. In this case, student 30 prefers team 5 as their highest ranked team, all the way down to team 10 as their lowest ranked team. And we also indicate their skill sets. In this case, a number 1 would indicate a hacker, number 2 a hipster, number 3 a hustler, and number 4 is a handler. For student 30, they are both a hustler and a handler. Now we're going to demonstrate the algorithm. Matching happens in four phases. In phase one, we're going to place the students on their teams. In phase two, any teams that are too large, we're going to restrict them down to a maximum. In phase three, we're going to take any orphans and fill them in to teams that may be too small. And finally, in phase four, we're going to make any final minor adjustments to balance out the teams. In phase one, we're going to place each student on their first ranked team that prefers them. In this example, student 30 prefers team five as their top ranked team. However, Team 5 does not include Student 30 in their rankings. Now we're going to try Student 30 on their second ranked team, in this case Team 9. And we can see that Team 9 ranks Student 30 second. So we can place Student 30 on Team 9 in the corresponding position. In Phase 2, we're going to trim down any team that is too large. In our example, Team 6 has 8 students assigned, and we can only accept a maximum of 7 students. So the way we do the trimming is that we pull out the lowest ranked student with skills that are not covered by a higher ranked student. In our example, Student 33 is the lowest ranked student, and they have skills 3 and 4. But because we have skills 3 and 4 already covered by students ranked higher, we can remove student 33 from team 6. Student 33 was pulled from team 6. Our next step is to assign the student to their next highest ranked team as we learned in phase number 1. However, student 33 does not have any more teams to choose from after team 6. So this makes student 33 an orphan. In phase 3, we're going to take all of our remaining orphans and place them to balance out the teams. For each team with less than 6 or 7 students, we're going to assign a student to balance out the skills already available on that team. In our example, student 66 has skill number 2, and team 1 has five members, none of which have skill number two. Therefore, student 66 is a good match for team one. Finally, in phase four, you can make any final adjustments you see fit to balance out the teams. For example, it might make sense, more sense for student 26 to be on team four.